Captain John Marshall, a decorated pilot known for his bravery and unyielding sense of duty, had just returned from a routine mission when an urgent distress signal flashed on his console. The message was from a remote desert planet known for its harsh environment and treacherous terrain. The call was from a stranded red-haired alien female pleading for help. The distress signal indicated that the alien was in critical condition, her life hanging by a thread. Without hesitation, John set his course for Iridia, the desolate desert planet, knowing that time was of the essence. He prepared the Phoenix, his trusted ship, for the dangerous journey ahead. As John navigated through the galaxy, he couldn't shake off the urgency of the distress call. The voice in the message was filled with desperation, and he knew he had to reach her before it was too late. The thought of someone stranded and alone in such a hostile environment drove him to push the Phoenix to its limits. As the Phoenix approached Iridia, John braced himself for the landing. The planet's surface was a sea of sand dunes with winds howling and sand swirling in violent storms. Navigating through the chaos, John managed to land the Phoenix near the coordinates provided by the distress signal. The heat was intense as he stepped out of his ship, the scorching sun beating down relentlessly. With his survival gear and a locator device in hand, John set out across the dunes, determined to find the stranded alien before it was too late. Each step through the shifting sands felt like a battle, but he pressed on, driven by the urgency of the mission. After hours of battling the harsh elements, John finally spotted a figure lying motionless in the sand. As he drew closer, he saw a strikingly beautiful alien woman with vibrant red hair. She was unconscious. Her skin blistered from the heat and her breathing was shallow. John quickly administered first aid, giving her water and shielding her from the sun. As she slowly regained consciousness, her eyes fluttered open, revealing a pair of striking emerald eyes. They locked onto John's, filled with a mixture of fear and relief. Thank you, she whispered weakly. I thought I was done for. John nodded, relief washing over him. I'm Captain John Marshall. Let's get you to safety. With the alien woman who introduced herself as Anara in tow, John made his way back to the Phoenix. The journey was arduous, with sandstorms threatening to bury them and the heat sapping their strength. Anara, though weak, managed to keep up, her determination mirroring John's. As they reached the Phoenix, John helped Anara inside, securing her in the medical bay. With the ship's engines roaring to life, they took off, escaping the deadly grip of Iridia's desert. As the phoenix soared away from the deadly sands of Iridia, John focused on stabilizing the ship's flight path and ensuring Anara's safety. In the medical bay, Anara began to regain her strength thanks to the advanced medical equipment aboard the phoenix. How are you feeling? John asked, his voice filled with concern as he checked on her. Anara managed a weak smile. Better thanks to you. My name is Anara. I was on a mission when my ship malfunctioned and crashed on Iridia. John nodded, intrigued. What kind of mission? Anara's eyes darkened with worry. I was trying to gather samples of a rare mineral found only on Iridia. It's crucial for creating a cure for a deadly plague that's ravaging my people. John felt a surge of determination. We'll do everything we can to help you complete your mission and get that cure. As Anara continued to recover, John piloted the Phoenix towards the nearest safe harbor for a thorough check on their ship and supplies. They would need to regroup before continuing their mission to gather the rare mineral and help Anara's people. Just as John thought they were in the clear, the Phoenix's sensors picked up multiple unidentified ships closing in fast. The distress signal must have attracted more than just a rescuer. Pirates, notorious in this sector, had been known to prey on vulnerable ships. Hang on, John shouted as he maneuvered the Phoenix through a series of evasive maneuvers. The ship shook violently as laser fire streaked past. Anara, now conscious and alert, watched with wide eyes. Can we outrun them? She asked, her voice filled with concern. I'll do my best, John replied, determination etched on his face. The phoenix twisted and turned through the vast expanse of space, John's piloting skills put to the ultimate test. The pirates were relentless, their ships faster and more agile. But John was a seasoned pilot, and with Anara's help, they managed to hold their own. Divert power to the rear shields. John instructed, sweat beating on his forehead. Anara quickly complied, her technical skills proving invaluable. With a daring loop and a well-placed shot, John took out one of the pirate ships, but more kept coming. Just as it seemed they might escape, a well-aimed shot hit the Phoenix's engines. 
Alarms blared as the ship spiraled out of control. John struggled with the controls, but it was no use. They were going down. Brace yourself, he shouted to Anara as the phoenix hurtled towards a nearby moon. The impact was brutal, throwing them both against their restraints. The ship skidded across the moon's rocky surface before coming to a halt, smoke billowing from its damaged hull. John and Anara emerged from the wreckage, battered but alive. The moon was barren with rocky outcrops and jagged cliffs. Their immediate concern was survival. With limited supplies and the pirates likely still on their trail, they had to move quickly. We need to find shelter and signal for help, John said, assessing their situation. Anara nodded, her face set with determination. Together, they set off across the desolate landscape, their bond growing stronger with each passing moment. They were united by their mission to save Anara's people and their fight for survival against the harsh conditions and relentless pursuers. The barren moon presented an unforgiving landscape with jagged cliffs and rocky outcrops as far as the eye could see. John and Anara trudged through the harsh terrain, their immediate goal being to find shelter and assess their situation. John scanned the horizon with his binoculars, spotting a cave in the distance. There, he pointed. That cave might provide some cover. Anara, though exhausted, nodded in agreement. Let's go. We need to get out of sight before the pirates find us. They moved quickly, their footsteps echoing through the desolate expanse. The journey was arduous, with the rough terrain slowing their progress. As they reached the cave, John activated his portable scanner to ensure it was safe. The cave seemed to extend deeper into the moon, offering more than just a temporary refuge. Inside, the temperature dropped, providing relief from the scorching heat outside. John set up a makeshift camp using their limited supplies to create a small but functional base. Anara examined their remaining equipment and supplies. We've got enough rations for a few days and the communications array seems intact, she said, her voice echoing softly in the cave. But we'll need to find a way to repair the phoenix or signal for help. John nodded, his mind racing with possibilities. We'll work on the communications array first. If we can send a distress signal, there's a chance someone will pick it up and come to our aid. They spent the next few hours setting up the array, carefully aligning the equipment to maximize their signal strength. Anara's technical expertise proved invaluable, and together they managed to get the array operational. Now we wait, John said, sitting down beside Anara. Hopefully someone will hear us. As they settled in for the night, the reality of their situation set in. Stranded on a desolate moon, pursued by pirates with limited supplies and no guarantee of rescue. Yet, despite the odds, they found solace in each other's presence, their bond growing stronger with each passing moment. As days passed, John and Anara adapted to their new environment, establishing a routine of maintaining their camp and working on the Phoenix whenever possible. Their time together was filled with conversations, sharing stories of their past and dreams for the future. One evening, as they sat by a small fire, Anara opened up about her mission. My people are suffering from a deadly plague. The mineral I was trying to collect on Iridia is the key to synthesizing a cure. I can't bear the thought of them continuing to suffer while I'm stuck here. John listened intently, his heart aching for Anara and her people. We'll find a way to get that mineral and save your people he said with determination. I promise you that. Anara looked into his eyes, her expression softening. Thank you, John. Your support means everything to me. Their bond deepened with each shared moment, an unspoken connection forming between them. They found strength in each other's presence, a beacon of hope amidst the desolation. One morning, the scanner picked up a weak signal. It was faint, but it was there. Anara quickly adjusted the communications array, boosting the signal strength. This is Anara of the Alarian people, stranded on Moon Sector 12B. We require immediate assistance. Please respond. Minutes felt like hours as they waited for a reply. Finally, a voice crackled through the speakers. Anara, this is Captain Raylan of the Starship Sentinel. We received your signal and are en route to your location. Hold tight. Help is on the way. Relief washed over them, and John hugged Anara tightly. We're going to get through this, he said, his voice filled with emotion. With rescue imminent, their focus shifted to preparing for the arrival of the Sentinel. They gathered their supplies, ensured the communications array was functioning, and awaited their rescuers with renewed hope. As the Sentinel descended onto the moon, its powerful lights cutting through the darkness, 
John and Anara stood side by side, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. They knew their journey was far from over, but they were no longer alone. Together, they were stronger, united by a bond forged in the fires of adversity. As the rescue team disembarked from the Sentinel, Captain Raylan approached them. Are you two all right? We are now, John replied, gripping Anara's hand firmly. Thank you for coming. With the promise of safety and the determination to complete Anara's mission, John and Anara boarded the Sentinel, ready to continue their journey. Their love and commitment to each other would guide them through the trials ahead as they fought to save Anara's people and build a future together. On board the Sentinel, John and Anara received medical attention for their injuries and the exhaustion they had endured. The ship's medbay was equipped with advanced healing technology, which quickly tended to their wounds and rejuvenated their spirits. Captain Raylan, a seasoned and compassionate leader, visited them as they recovered. We intercepted the distress signal from your ship and came as quickly as we could. We've also received news about the plague affecting your people, Anara. We're here to help in any way we can. Anara's eyes filled with gratitude. Thank you, Captain Raylan. Time is of the essence. We need to retrieve the mineral from Iridia to synthesize the cure. Raylan nodded. We've already sent a team to Iridia to collect the mineral. In the meantime, we'll take you to our nearest research station where we can begin preliminary work on the cure. John and Anara spent the next few days on board the Sentinel, during which they developed a strong camaraderie with the crew. The bond between John and Anara deepened as they supported each other through the challenges they faced. One evening, as they stood on the observation deck looking out at the stars, John turned to Anara. We've come a long way, haven't we? Anara smiled, her hand finding his. Yes, and I couldn't have done it without you, John. Your courage and determination have given me hope. John squeezed her hand. And you've given me purpose. Together we'll save your people. The Sentinels team successfully retrieved the necessary mineral from Iridia and brought it back to the ship. With the precious cargo on board, they set course for the Ilarian Research Station where scientists awaited their arrival. As they approached the station, John and Anara could see it bustling with activity. The news of their mission success had already reached the Ilarian people, filling them with renewed hope. The station's advanced laboratories were prepared to begin synthesizing the cure immediately. Upon their arrival, Anara was greeted with tears of joy and gratitude from her fellow scientists. They wasted no time, diving into the work of creating the cure. John stayed by Anara's side, assisting where he could and providing unwavering support. The process was complex and demanding, but the combined efforts of the Sentinel's crew and the Ilarian scientists made significant progress. Anara's expertise and the crucial mineral led to breakthroughs, bringing them closer to a viable cure. Days turned into nights, and the team worked tirelessly. John admired Anara's dedication and resilience, feeling his admiration for her grow with each passing moment. Finally, after relentless effort, the cure was ready. Anara held the vial in her hands, tears of relief streaming down her face. We did it, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. John hugged her tightly. You did it, Anara. You've saved your people. The first doses of the cure were administered to the most critically ill patients, and the results were nothing short of miraculous. The plague that had ravaged the Ilarian people began to recede, replaced by health and hope. A grand celebration was held at the research station to honor the achievement. Anara and John stood before the gathered crowd, who cheered and applauded their heroes. Captain Raylan addressed the crowd. Today we celebrate not only the creation of the cure, but also the bravery and determination of Anara and John. Their bond and commitment to saving lives have shown us what true courage and love can achieve. Anara took the microphone, her voice filled with gratitude. This journey has taught me the power of unity and the strength we find in each other. I couldn't have done this without John. He is not just a hero. He is my heart. John, feeling overwhelmed, stepped forward. Anara's mission became my mission. Her fight became my fight. Together we are stronger, and together we will continue to face whatever comes our way. As they embraced, the crowd erupted in cheers. The future was filled with promise, and their bond, forged in the fires of adversity, would guide them through whatever challenges lay ahead. With the Ilarian people saved and their bond stronger than ever, John and Anara looked to the stars, 
ready to face the next chapter of their journey together. The celebration at the research station marked a triumphant moment for John and Anara. The Illyrian people were beginning to recover, and hope was restored. However, their joy was soon overshadowed by an ominous message from Captain Raylan. During a private meeting, Raylan explained the situation. We've intercepted communications indicating that the pirates who attacked you on Iridia are part of a larger syndicate. They are not pleased with their defeat and are planning retaliation. Their target is this research station, intending to destroy the cure and destabilize the Illyrian people. John felt a surge of anger and determination. We can't let that happen. We need to defend this station and ensure the safety of the cure and the people here. Anara's eyes were filled with fear, but also resolve. What can we do to prepare? Raylan outlined a plan. We need to fortify the station's defenses and prepare the crew for a potential attack. We'll set up a perimeter and deploy surveillance drones to monitor any incoming threats. John, your combat experience will be invaluable in organizing our defenses. John agreed, and he and Raylan immediately set to work. The station buzzed with activity as everyone pitched in to fortify their position. Anara focused on safeguarding the remaining supplies of the cure and ensuring that the research data was secure. As the day turned into night, the station stood ready. The tension was palpable, but John and Anara drew strength from their bond and their commitment to protecting the Illyrian people. In the dead of night, the surveillance drones detected incoming ships. The pirates had arrived. Alarms blared throughout the station, and everyone sprang into action. John, Raylan, and the crew took their positions, ready to defend against the imminent assault. The first wave of pirate ships descended upon the station, their weapons blazing. The station's newly fortified defenses held strong, repelling the initial attack. John coordinated the defense, directing the crew with precision and determination. Anara, from her position in the research lab, monitored the situation closely. She worked with the medical team to ensure that the patients were moved to secure locations and that the cure remained protected. As the battle raged on, the pirates grew more desperate and aggressive. They launched a ground assault, attempting to breach the station's defenses. John led a team to counter the ground forces, engaging in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. The fighting was intense, with the pirates determined to destroy the station and the cure. John fought valiantly, his mind focused on protecting Anara and the Illyrian people. His skills and determination inspired the crew, and they fought with renewed vigor. Despite their best efforts, the pirates managed to breach the outer defenses, and chaos erupted within the station. John and his team fought to push them back, but the situation grew increasingly dire. In the midst of the chaos, John spotted the pirate leader, a ruthless figure named Corin, making his way toward the research lab. Realizing Anara was in danger, John broke through the fray and pursued Corin. Corin reached the lab and confronted Anara, who stood her ground, clutching a vial of the precious cure. Give me the cure and I might spare your life, Corin sneered. Anara's eyes blazed with defiance. You'll never get your hands on this cure. Just as Corin raised his weapon, John burst into the lab, tackling him to the ground. The two men fought fiercely, their struggle a brutal clash of strength and determination. Anara watched, her heart pounding as John and Corin battled. With a final powerful blow, John incapacitated Corin, securing the safety of the lab and the cure. He turned to Anara, relief washing over him. Are you okay? Anara nodded, tears of relief in her eyes. Yes, thanks to you. Together they emerged from the lab to find that the crew, inspired by John's bravery, had managed to repel the remaining pirates. The station was secure once more and the threat had been neutralized. Captain Raylan approached them, her expression filled with gratitude. You two have saved us all. Your courage and strength have made this victory possible. John and Anara embraced, their bond stronger than ever. They had faced incredible odds and emerged victorious, united by their love and determination to protect the Illyrian people. As the dawn broke, the station began to rebuild and heal from the attack. John and Anara knew that their journey was far from over, but they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, confident in their bond and the strength they drew from each other. Together they looked to the future with hope, ready to continue their mission and build a life filled with love, purpose, and adventure. The research station had begun to return to normalcy after the pirate attack, with repairs underway and the Illyrian people recovering from their ordeal. 
John and Anara continued to support the efforts, their bond stronger than ever. However, a sense of unease lingered in the air. One afternoon, Captain Raylan called an emergency meeting with John, Anara, and the senior officers. The atmosphere was tense as Raylan addressed the group. We've intercepted communications indicating that there's a mole within our ranks. Someone has been feeding information to the pirate syndicate. John's eyes widened in shock. A traitor? Here, we need to find them before they can do any more damage. Raylan nodded. I have already begun an investigation, but we need to be cautious. We can't let the traitor know we're onto them. As they worked to identify the mole, John and Anara grew more vigilant. They scrutinized every detail, searching for any signs of suspicious behavior among the crew. The sense of betrayal weighed heavily on them, knowing that someone they trusted had put them all in danger. Late one night, as John reviewed surveillance footage, he noticed something unusual. A crew member, Darian, was seen accessing restricted areas and communicating secretly. John's heart sank. Darian had been part of the team since the beginning, a trusted ally. John and Anara confronted Raylan with their findings. We have reason to believe Darian is the mole, John said, his voice filled with regret. Raylan's expression hardened. We need to act quickly. If Darian is the traitor, he could be planning another attack. Under the cover of darkness, John, Anara, and Raylan devised a plan to confront Darian without alerting him. They decided to lure him into a secure area where they could question him and uncover his motives. John and Anara approached Darian casually, inviting him to discuss a sensitive matter. As they led him to the designated location, John's heart pounded with a mix of anger and betrayal. Once inside, Raylan and a security team surrounded Darian. Darian's eyes darted around, realizing too late that he had been caught. What's going on? he asked, feigning innocence. Raylan stepped forward, her voice cold. We know you've been feeding information to the pirates, Darian. Why did you betray us? Darian's facade crumbled, and he glared at them defiantly. You wouldn't understand. The pirates promised me wealth and power. I was tired of being just another expendable crew member. John's fists clenched in anger. Your actions put countless lives at risk. How could you do this? Darian sneered. You think you're so noble, but in the end it's all about survival. I did what I had to do. Raylan signaled the security team and they restrained Darian. You'll answer for your crimes, she said firmly. We'll ensure you face justice. As Darian was taken away, John and Anara felt a mix of relief and sorrow. The betrayal had cut deep, but they knew they had to focus on the future. With the mole identified, they could strengthen their defenses and ensure the safety of the station. In the following days, John and Anara worked tirelessly to repair the damage caused by Darian's betrayal. They bolstered security measures and continued to support the recovery efforts. The experience had brought them even closer, their bond unbreakable. One evening, as they stood on the observation deck watching the stars, Anara spoke softly. We've been through so much, John. I don't know what I would have done without you. John turned to her, his eyes filled with love. We faced every challenge together and will continue to do so. Our bond has made us stronger, and as long as we have each other, we can overcome anything. Anara smiled, leaning into John. Together we can achieve anything. I love you, John. I love you too, Anara, John replied, his voice filled with emotion. As they embraced, they knew that their journey was far from over. The future was uncertain, but their love and determination would guide them through whatever challenges lay ahead. With their bond as their strength, they were ready to face the universe, side by side. With Darien exposed and justice served, the research station gradually returned to normalcy. The cure was being distributed to the Illyrian people, and the station's defenses were fortified to prevent any future attacks. John and Anara continued to support these efforts, but their thoughts were now turning towards the future. One morning, as they were working in the lab, Captain Raylan approached them with a smile. I have some good news. We've received word from the Ilarian homeworld. They wish to honor you both for your bravery and dedication. Anara's eyes lit up with joy. Our people are recovering thanks to you, John. This is wonderful news. John nodded, feeling a sense of fulfillment. It's been an incredible journey. I'm honored to have been part of it. Preparations were made for their return to the Ilarian homeworld. The journey was filled with anticipation, and as the ship entered the planet's atmosphere, John marveled at the beauty of Anara's homeland.
The landscape was a mix of lush greenery and shimmering waters, a stark contrast to the desolate moons and deserts they had endured. Upon landing, they were greeted by a large crowd of Valerians, their faces filled with gratitude and admiration. Anara's family was there, tears of joy streaming down their faces as they embraced her. Anara, my daughter, you've returned to us, her mother said, holding her close. And you, John, have our eternal gratitude. John felt a warmth in his heart as Anara's family welcomed him. He had found not only a partner in Anara, but a new family as well. A grand ceremony was held in their honor. Anara and John stood before the gathered crowd, their hearts swelling with pride and love. The Ilarian leader, a wise and venerable figure, addressed the assembly. Today we celebrate the bravery and determination of Anara and John. Their bond has brought hope and healing to our people. Let us honor them and the promise of unity they represent. The ceremony was followed by days of celebration. John and Anara reveled in the joy of their success and the love of the Ilarian people. But as the festivities continued, they began to think about their next steps. One evening, as they walked along the shores of a tranquil lake, Anara spoke softly. John, our journey has been incredible. But there is still so much to do. My people need continued support to fully recover, and I want to help ensure a brighter future for them. John nodded, his eyes reflecting the moonlit water. I feel the same way, Anara. We've accomplished so much together, but our mission isn't over. I want to stay and help rebuild, to be part of this new chapter with you. Anara smiled, her heart swelling with love. Together we can achieve anything. I want to build a future with you, John, here on my homeworld. With their decision made, John and Anara committed themselves to the continued recovery and growth of the Ilarian people. They worked tirelessly, their efforts making a tangible difference in the lives of those they helped. Years passed, and their bond only grew stronger. John became an integral part of the Ilarian community, respected and loved by all. Anara's work in the scientific community led to new advancements and discoveries, furthering the prosperity of her people. One day, as they stood on a hill overlooking the flourishing city they had helped rebuild, Anara turned to John. We've come so far, and there is still so much more to do. But with you by my side, I know we can face any challenge. John smiled, taking her hand in his. Together we are unstoppable. Our love has carried us through the darkest times and will continue to light our way. As the sun set, casting a golden glow over the landscape, John and Anara looked to the future with hope and determination. They had faced incredible challenges and emerged stronger, united by their love and commitment to each other and to the Ilarian people. Their journey was far from over, but they knew that as long as they had each other, they could overcome anything. Together, they would build a future filled with love, adventure, and endless possibilities.